What's up guys, it's Carson, back here on Toxic Gaming today guys, with a second draft analysis. We're in two leagues going on pretty much simultaneously, but for the uh, major Pokemon League Season 5, um, we were in the MPL and everything uh, Season 4, we took over a team that was drafted for us about like week 3 or something we came in, not too late, but uh, we made it to playoffs there and had a pretty good run. So uh, with Season 5, we actually are going to be doing this stuff and have some fun with it. Um, there were 12 people in the draft, and we were, like, the dead-ass fucking middle number six spot. <laughs> um, I hate being in the middle of drafts. I'd rather be in, the like, the bottom three or top three just to have some sort of, like, I felt decent putting together of a team. I feel like when you get in the middle, you get a lot of just nothing at times. Um, but we, uh, we're at number six, and we did end up going pretty well with our draft effect. We were all right. Um, got, definitely got some gems, but also some mons that we're probably going to be um, doing some transfers with along the road. So, uh, if you are interested in any of the transfers, seeing what we do there, I will probably be just announcing them on Twitter. Um, and once you guys decide, tell me in the comments down below if you want a like a specific like short little video detailing a transfer, or, like why we did it. Um, if not, I will just be putting it out on Twitter and everything for it. Um, but with our number one pick overall, we or number one pick for us, I guess, um, and with our sixth pick total in the draft, we were able to get um, basically a glue mon, as I like to call it. We got Mew, uh, number one overall, and then you, as you can see on your screen, Mew does have a little um, outer glow thing, and that's because Mew is also our offensive Z user on this team. Um, Mew is able to use so many moves. And really, the support move pool isn't there as as like as well as some of the other mons. Like it already has all the setup it needs. It has so much coverage for offensive moves, and its stats are already pretty decent to where it being a setup Z user isn't the most necessary thing. And we can use the Munium Z thing. We can use the Genesis Supernova, all that. So I wanted Mew to be our first pick. I've never used Mew in draft format. I've seen it used a bunch of times. I've seen it kind of had to be slapped into a defog role a lot of times, bulky and defog. But just the fact that it can have setup um, and literally anything is going to be so nice to me. I want to be able to bring like a few surprise sets here and there um, for Mew. And then being able to have that Z crystal and protect somewhat from knockoff users and uh, knockoff heavy teams would be it was going to be really nice and be able to just to nuke something. So, uh, right, I decided to go right now with our number one overall pick in Mew. Um, next, though, in our drafting and such, I went with um, our number two pick being Tapu Bulu. I wanted to... I've never used Tapu Bulu. As far as I can know, I've only used one Tapu, and that was Lele, and <laughs> first sure it's banned as shit in most leagues. But Bulu is one of the mons that I've really wanted to use because it is the Brahma Bull. Like, it is... There's minimal switch-ins to a Tapu Bulu that don't get two shot. Uh, like when you have a Tapu Bulu with the grassy terrain and then a boosted wood hammer, like it is hard to totally switch into this mon. Um, the ta the terrain also pairs well with Mew, just for the fact of that little bit of residual health. If I have Mew with both leftovers and the terrain up, I'm getting a lot of health back. Um, that's kind of the overall theme as you go as we go through the rest of the team is that grassy terrain can benefit a lot of my mons. Um, that's what I really want to do. I kind of built more around what Bulu could do more than just him hitting a lot of things super hard. Um, Bulu also has like that cool little um, Calm Mind, uh, Calm Mind uh, Giga Drain, Dazzling Gleam set. And with Leech Seed, like, you get some cool little tech things to do here and there. But really, I love Bulu for the fact that it just hits things super, super hard inside the terrain with Woodhammer. Um, I believe it gets coverage in Rock Slide for some bug mons and fire mons it does get dazzling gleam for fairy coverage but i'm really not i'm really not looking for tapu bulu as more of an offensive fairy as like a dragon switch in on some outrages and then all of a sudden now that he's got to find a switch in for bulu that's really what i want him to go with um next up for the number three pick i decided to take a mega again this is i maybe i didn't say this but this is a points style draft so it's, there's not tiers or anything for 35 points uh, Mew was 55, Tapu Bulu was 45, but for 35 points, we were able to take our third pick in Mega Blastoise, and I wanted Mega Blastoise to, to start the Firewater Dragon Core with Bulu, in the fact that Mega Blastoise doesn't have the best recovery options, like, ever, like, I think it's best with his rest, or, like, maybe, maybe it gets, like, a random fucking, like, stockpile swallow shit, I don't know, 
but it's the fact that Mega Blastoise doesn't have that much recovery, and so by being able to pair it with a Grassy Terrain user, like I don't even get leftovers on Mega Blastoise, so pairing it with Grassy Terrain can give me some of that residual recovery back. And the fact that like its stat, like its move pool combos and the boost from Mega Launcher really helps on just hitting Mons harder than they expect. Um, having Scald for Scald Burns is really nice. Um, having Aura Sphere and Dark Pulse, and then have the, both those get Mega Launcher boost, really nice. Having Flash Cannon for Fairies is really interesting as well. Um, the other thing is he's he's is our, basically our bulky attacker. Like Bulu's pretty bulky, and Mew is you know a Mew, but he is kind of like our bulky Mon that is a bulky attacker. Can be run more on the, the defensive, special defensive sides, and then still hit decently hard without having to invest in it. Um, another thing I really like about Mega Blastoise that I've been told a lot of, like Mega Blastoise is really high in a lot of people's opinions for Megas, is that he can punish Stealth Rock Setters. Like, there's a majority of Stealth Rock Setters that are either weak to water or weak to fighting, I think, or, um, I think it's water fighting, and then, like, uh, there's one more, Steel, I think is the other one, that, like, a lot of Stealth Rock Setters are weak to. And Mega Blastoise gets those co those move coverage in spades. So, like, he can punish um, setters, really put pressure. Like, do you want to set your rocks up and then risk this mon just dying? So, like, that's what I want Mega Blastoise to do to punish um, any type of hazard setters, especially stealth rock setters. Uh, next, we have our fourth mon, and he is the GOAT. He's the bringer of the S movement. He's got Cobalion. I wanted to use Cobalion for a long time but I never got the chance to. It never seemed to fall to me. I've always prioritized other things before I look at a uh, fighting type at times, or even like a steel type. Usually you can get like lower tier, t lower tiered or lower priced um, steel mons for like really good steel picks um, in the lower prices. But I wanted to go um, good old Cobalion here, really because of 108 speed is really nice. Um, having, literally having him having Double Dance with Sword Dance and Rock Polish can wreck teams. And that com with the combination of, uh, f Fighting and Steel Stab really is nice. And doesn't mean fairies can, like, completely wall us. Um, and then, like, with a workable nine base 90 special attack, a, uh, mixed Cobalion can actually do something. Especially if, like, if I were able to run, like, mixed weakness policy. Like, we can get something really cool with that, with that type of Cobalion. Um, he's gonna be basically like a general manager. He's that position on our team. He's gonna probably be the one that'll be showing up the most just by how useful he is. Because he truly is the GOAT. Like, that is Cobalion for our team here. Um, then with our number five pick uh, on the draft, I decided to fire type, finish out the uh, water fair, or water dragon, fucking water dragon, uh, <laughs> grass water fire core here with uh, road dog Arente. Um, he's he works out so well. Banded E-Speeds, there's nothing to uh, laugh at. And him having Sacred Fire, one of the, one of, I believe, arguably the best fire moves in the game. Having Banded Sacred Fires is so nice. Um, good base 100 speed, nice speed tier to be around. Um, makes people have to prep for him and Mew. Uh, basically, if they don't think it's going to be a bulky Mew, they could um, guess if not invested in speed and not to prep for being all the way at base 100. But when you see Entei, like, fuck, I have to prep for that extra speed, which then possibly will let him, Cobalion, uh, Tapu Bulu, Blastoise, everybody else punch enough holes if they have to prep for speed. That's what I really like having with um, Entei here. And he, like, he does things simply, but he does them very well. Like, that's basically my thing, is like, he, he doesn't do much, but what he does, he excels at, and that's why I wanted to have Entei. Plus, I've not used Entei, I believe, at all. I tried to do a lot of stuff where I've not used some mons, to try to learn more just overall about the game. So, like, Entei I haven't used very much. Um, but next, to actually finish the dragon part of the Fairy Dragon Steel Core, it's a mod that I used a while back. Like, I, like PSE Season 2, I believe. A while, a while back. And it's Tyrantrum. The king himself. <laughs> Basically, you really only need one move on Tyrantrum, and that's Head Smash. Like, with Rockhead, or with Rockhead and stuff, not getting that recoil, having Head Smash is so, so nice. Um, I believe he has, gets both Rock Polish and D-Dance, so you can literally, you can mitigate his, like, low speed, and then all of a sudden have a hugely strong Mon there in front of you on your opponent's team. He'll, he is the guy who, he can take a hit, 
and then dish out so much damage that that mon will then be able to be revenge killed by a lot of other mons on our team. Um, so I, that's why I want a Tyrantrum, something that hits super hard. And if a mon, if the, my opponent is like afraid of it, I bring him in for I bring him in. Say after something dies, he's afraid of it. He knows he can't take it one v one. It has to switch out to something else. I go for that rock polish, get to plus two speed, and now he's in trouble. Like now there's like things will be dying to head smash, things will be dying to outrage and earthquake. It's really not much you need. Uh, I don't I don't even know what fairy type could really take a full on head smash from one of these. If I maybe have to be like a max defense floor just like around there, but like he's gonna do some heavy heavy damage. Um, with uh, Head Smash. I believe one of the very types that would be able to take Head Smashers decently. I think they resist rock. I might be wrong, but it would have been Tapu Bulu, but we took Bulu. So, uh, getting one of the things out of Tyrantrum's way in his wake of terror. Um, next on our team, I just, I looked at my team and I was like, okay, I'm hitting really good on the sp um, physical side with uh, Cobalion, Entei, Tyrantrum, and Tapu Bulu. I'm hitting all right on the special side with... Um, Blast, Mega Blastoise and Mew, but then also Mew won't always be like always hitting hard. So I felt I needed a fast mod and I needed something to hit fast on the special side, and that was Gengar. I also like the idea of having a spin blocker for um, Cobalion being able to set up Stealth Rocks, Tyrantrum being able to set up Rocks, something to spin block would be really nice as well. So I went with Gengar. He's he's an OG Gen 1. Like he does the reason he's like always been in OU is because he deserves to be there. Like there's things that Gengar does that just deserves him up in that higher tier stuff and the higher price ranges. Um with you know getting it got rid of Levitate now for Cursed Body, it's kind of annoying and it's kinda of sad. It's kinda of sad to be all honesty, but on my team, he can get the benefit from both having Black Sludge potentially and uh, having the terrain up, so he actually gets a benefit from that, and that's what I really like with a uh, Gengar. He really, I could try to take that ability change from, to Curse Body and try to make it work for him by giving giving him that little residual HP. Maybe he'll live more on one hit compared to just getting straight knocked out. Not the t not the thickest thing in the book, but he'll do really well, and I feel like he can hit super hard if need be. And he's a good fairy killer for us, so I like that idea. Um, next up we have, uh, really the, one of the Ultra Beasts I don't really see a whole lot of, and that's Zerkatry. And you can see on your screen too, as, as with the Mew, Zerkatry has got a little glow on him, but it's white. And that means that Zerkatry is our support Z user. Uh, he will be able to use support Z moves, not just physical, and that's really, really because get, having the chance to have Z Rain Dance and Z Electric Terrain. Um, we'll have two terrain controlling type things, and having those boosts from those moves can be supremely huge for Zerka Treats for um, uh, revenge killing power. Literally all, all you need is one kill with Zerka Tree and then he can just destroy a team. Like he can do that 173 or fucking something special attack. You get a boost on that. Holy hell. <laughs> Um, I know you have Tail Glow as well for setup, and literally if you're able to set up a Tail Glow, some, whatever he, they try to switch in, if you hit them neutrally, will probably die, especially if they can get hit by Thunderbolts. Like, Zerka Tree is so powerful, and I've just not seen it used very much. I feel like the reason it's not used a whole lot is because of the mitigating, like, base 83 speed, but I tried to, I wanted to try to get that, um, out of, like, the, put that out of the equation by being able to do... Um, Z Electric Terrain, Z Rain Dance, do things like that. Just the Z Support move, move Pool. We've seen uh, in PPL with Z Hypnosis Gardevoir, Zerka Tree gets Hypnosis. So like we've seen it work for us, and hopefully Zerka Tree can really pull it out well. Um, with our next pick, I really wanted a ground type, and I wanted to try him on that was, it's low, it's lower in the price range, we were starting to run out of some points with taking Zerka Tree and Gengar, like, so priced heavy mods of 40 points each, so late, we were starting to run out of some points, and I wanted to take him on, that I've, I've seen and heard some really good things about, and it's really interesting to me, because I feel like it has a really nice fit on our team, and that's Mudsdale, um, Mudsdale having the stamina ability to just be able to sit there and be a defense tank, like, if we're able to go, like, an AV Mudsdale and just watch him watch his defense rise, that's perfect. That's all I would need Mudsdale to do. Um, if he literally got Stealth Rocks, he would be higher priced immensely. But uh, with Grassy Terrain as well, Earthquakes, yes, will be weaker. 
um, but he actually will get some residual health from that as well. And also with Heavy Slam, for my pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure he's like a one ton Pokemon. Like he's fucking heavy as shit. And getting Heavy Slam as well to knock out some fairies. We definitely got some good fairy killers on this team to protect our uh, Tyrantrum little boy. Um, but I felt like he could be really nice as a literal tank for us. Like, the workhorse of our team. And, I don't know, some of the coverage he gets is so random and weird, and I love it. <laughs> but I felt like that's really what he could benefit from, is just being our tank. Being our thing that can come in, take hits, and just dish out consistent damage so that other things can clean up. That's what I wanted Mudsdale for. And, the Latch community doesn't hurt as well, being able to stop Volt Switching. That was really interesting. Um, our second to last Mon, we needed a normal type, and really having another Mon that could be a good support Mon, and uh, stay around a little ways, and also be able to heal up some of our other Mons, because really we don't have much in terms of Recover or Roost, really the only thing we have is Mew and the Leech Seed and Horn Leech on Tapu Bulu. Um, so I wanted to take a Mon here that was normal type and had all those things, and we went with Audino. Because Audino being able to Witch Pass, having um, Regenerator just to heal itself up, Heal Bell, Knock Off Support. Basically, Audino's job is to come in and just kind of stay alive for a little while to keep everybody else alive. Um, every, um, most of our team are more bulkier set bonds, but that doesn't mean they like that doesn't mean they can stay on the field forever. They need to be healed up at some points, and that's what we needed Audino for. Uh, also, if we maybe have a team that's like throwing out T spikes. And is like really trying to go at them, and we're able to get them away. But say four mons are poisoned because a lot of our team is grounded. Uh, Audino can come in, heal Bell, get rid of all of that, be perfectly fine with that. With for that was the only thing like Audino ended up doing in that game is get rid of all that toxic. Perfectly fine. Uh, really, Audino has one job, and Audino does it pretty fucking well. And that's really all I need to do. Um, and then finally, we had a little special thing is where they changed one of the rules this year or this season, where usually you would only have two Z-Mons, but they had a rule where if you picked up a five-point Mon, which is basically the lowest points, um, then that Mon could become a Super Z user as well, a Support Z user. And we found something that I don't remember if it was... I think it was overlooked when creating... Um, when they were creating the spreadsheet and everything. I'm pretty sure it was overlooked. And we picked up Hypno... We got Hypno for 5 points. It was super, super interesting to get Hypno for 5 points. Like, it wasn't on the sheet anywhere. That's why I think, like, it may have been overlooked accidentally. But it wasn't on the sheet. I figured it would be around the 10, maybe 15 point range for being a fully evolved Psychic type. But it wasn't. So we actually get pick up Hypno and get a Super Z user with Z Belly Drum, Z Wish. We get Baton Pass. We get Toxic Protect Stalling. We get a little bit in offenses. He has a nice special defense stat and combined with a decent HP stat. Hypno is... I feel like Hypno will be like the weird key for some of our matches. Whenever he's there, he'll be like, okay, the match swung back in our favor strangely because of Hypno, of all Mons. So I also want to take some of that pressure off of being a psychic type uh, with from Mew. Like if we did say we Mew wasn't for some reason going to fit, but Hypno will, which I'm sure there might be a matchup with that. I can't think of it right now, but I feel like there might be a matchup where those two will fit better. Hypno will be slipped in there and be really nice going on. Or if our opponent say doesn't have a Dark type for some reason, they're just like, no, I'm not. Don't have a Dark type, or their Dark type is like super weak to uh, Fairy moves or Fighting moves or something, and we can put both of them on our team. That could be really really nice. Um, passing any stats from. Um, Hypno into Mew would be extremely helpful. Uh, Mew does get a lot of setup on its own, but not having to take those that turn to set up would be really cool. Uh, I know with the Baton Pass rules that they set on, is that it's basically the old, usual Baton Pass rules you see in League, where you can Baton Pass any stats combined as long as there's no speed involved, or you can only pass speed, like it can only be, it can only do like something like that. So we could pass Calm Minds, but we can't pass that plus agility, or we could pass just agility. Like it's one of those type of things. But that's why I wanted Hypno on this team. Really cool to pick up a Mon for five points that wasn't on the sheet, and just get a really nice Super Z user. Um, but that's our draft so far. Three Z users being Offense with Mew, and then the Supers being Zerkatree and Hypno. 
really interesting to see what our team, like, what our record will be after making the playoffs last season. Um, let me know down below in the comments and everything what you guys think of our draft so far. There will be, as of right now, if there's any transfers, they'll be happening on Twitter, so make sure you follow me there. Links in the description. If you guys would like me to rather do videos for those, just kind of like maybe five minutes long explaining why we're swapping Mons around, let me know down below. Um, but without any further ado, if you guys are like, or if you guys are excited and everything for the MPL to start up, make sure you like the video and subscribe for more so you don't miss out. But I'm gonna get up on here, so thank you guys for coming out. I'm Carson, this is Toxic Gaming, and as always, you guys stay toxic. We'll see you guys.